and here is the backyard in night mode with the illuminator on distance to the fence at this point is approximately 25 yards I'm going to turn the illuminator off not nearly as good with the illuminator on it's really good hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns so this time we're going to review something a little different I was contacted by OneLeaf.ai makers of night vision equipment, and asked to do a review of their NV400 night scope and to participate in their affiliate program, which, if you clicked on the link below, would give me 7% of any sales generated. I said yes to reviewing the night vision and no to the affiliate program, because how can you trust that I'm giving you an honest review if I'm profiting from that review. I can't, I don't think. It just doesn't feel right to me. So they agreed and they sent me this, the Commander NV400 night vision scope. It's about 22 inches long, assembled in this form. It weighs about three and a half pounds. And, um, my primary experience with night vision is 40 years old, and the only thing I worked with very much were first-generation starlight systems. So this is a quantum leap <laughs> forward from those, as you might imagine. So let's get into it. Um, when it comes in the box, there is some assembly required. The sunscreen is not in place. The rubber eyepiece is not in place. It just screws in and screws out, and they give you two of them with different lengths, which is rather nice. Um, the mounts are reversed for shipping, for just for packaging. So the first thing you need to do is rotate them 180 degrees and lock them down so that you can mount it on a rifle. Then you need to mount the IR illuminator. This is a three power it has three power settings, which are activated by clicking this button, which is very familiar to anyone who's seen a tactical flashlight in the last 20 years. Uh, the first press gives you low power. Second is medium. Third is high. Fourth is off. Very simple. It is adjustable for range. You can go anywhere from broad coverage to a spot, which is very useful for long range shooting. It is adjustable, which you will need to do at range because of parallax, with this, a coin slot screw, which also has a handy little handle if you're stronger than a gorilla. Otherwise, you're going to use a coin or the edge of a key. And on the opposite side is the optional laser rangefinder. This is pretty cool. Um, Mine came with it factory installed, but if I've read the sales information correctly, it is optional. There are two sections of Picatinny rail for mounting things, notably the IR illuminator. You could put a red dot offset on the other one, I imagine. Something. I don't know. Um, amusingly, these things that appear to be adjustment turrets for a conventional scope aren't. This one is the battery case, and this one has the input-output ports, which use the provided mini HDMI cable, so you can attach it to another device and view it in real time, and a USB port. And both cords are provided. There's also a 64 gigabyte SIM card, and there's an optional 128 gigabyte SIM card. And this, is uh, a quick press of this will activate or deactivate the laser rangefinder. The laser rangefinder actually interfaces with the scope and it displays the range on your view screen. It does not adjust the crosshairs. There's no active ballistic correction or anything in here for that. You're just going to have to do that yourself. Um, a long press of this gives you the menu, which offers a stunning array of options and adjustments, including five different colors of reticle and 
all kinds of stuff. We'll get into that in a future video. Now, when the menu is on, you scroll through it this way. When the menu is off, this adjusts from 1 to 13 power, um, which we'll explore later in future videos. The on-off button is here, and your standard options are here, which are to record video or a photo, to switch between the three modes, which are daylight, which provides surprisingly good light gathering capability. Uh, the next thing you press when you press it is it toggles to starlight, where it is a combination of IR and light gathering. And I'm on the wrong side, this one. <laughs> the third press gives you night mode, which is straight up IR, which is surprisingly capable in passive mode and really quite good using the illuminator. Uh, below that is a button. The bottom of the button gives you picture in picture, which gives you a small rectangular section in the top of your view at greater magnification where the crosshair is repeated. So you can be focused on a target at the same time you're maintaining a broader field of view for situational awareness. On this side, the bottom part of this button uh, allows you to scroll through the things you've recorded. And the top of it allows you to adjust the brightness of the LED screen inside. It is useful to note for people like me that this is not a scope as such. It is a digital night vision system. There is no direct visual connection between the front end and the back. There's a Sony Starviz CMOS chip up here and it sends data to a screen back here. And there is an adjustment here to compensate for individual's eyesight on the diopter. And I find that I have no line bifocals and they do not seem to work and play well with this. So I've got it adjusted to use without my glasses on and I was able to adjust it quite readily so that I could view the reticle and all of the other information that is displayed or can be displayed on the screen. Um, my initial impressions are that it's very solid. It's pretty waterproof. I don't think you're going to encounter any amount of rain that is going to create issues. Now, you're supposed to flip open the sunscreen when using this at night. Now, in my video looking down the street, there's a couple of street lights overhead and um, I found it useful to keep the sunshade closed to keep those from washing out the image. And uh, it's a solid unit and I like it quite a bit. So I haven't done extensive testing with it yet. I have not delved through the myriad adjustments available on the menu. But my initial impressions of this are very good. Um, it seems very capable. It seems very feature rich for the price. And I'm going to be intrigued to get this mounted on a rifle and do some shooting, not least because I want to try the one shot zero system, which you select in the menu. You fire around at the bullseye. You keep the reticle at your point of aim and use this to adjust a cursor to the bullet hole and then record that and you're zeroed. That's pretty cool. The price of ammo these days, I really hope it works. So that's our introduction to the NV400 night vision system from oneleaf.ai. Okay, this is daylight mode, looking down the street, playing with the focus a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty good.
please excuse the shakiness of the image. I'm holding this in my hand because I'm not going to stand here pointing a rifle down the street. So this is, believe it or not, daylight mode. And you can see there is significant light gathering. There is a street light immediately to my left outside of my garage, maybe 20 feet away. And there is another street light at approximately 42, 43 meters. The pickup truck is 64 meters away. And at the end of the street is about 132 meters away. So this is daylight mode. Now we're going to switch to night mode or starlight as it's called. There we go. I got rid of the picture in picture. Okay, we are now in starlight mode which appears to be a combination of passive light gathering and infrared and you can see the spot of the infrared laser rangefinder flashing down range. So, <laughs> that's interesting. Let's switch to straight up IR mode. Okay, we are now in night mode, which is pure IR. Again, you can see the rangefinder laser. I'm going to turn the rangefinding laser off. so that it's not flashing in the display. There we go. Now this is with no IR illumination. So, let's turn on the IR illuminator. This is low power setting. It sharpens things up nicely. And this is medium power setting. This is the high power setting and you can pretty clearly see that bush I'm looking at 130 meters away. Cool. So, let's focus in. You can see the spotlight has not been adjusted to the reticle. We'll talk about how to do that in a future video. And uh, there will be more videos. There will be shooting videos and whatever else I can think of to test this. Um, I would like to mention that these are extensively shock tested. There is video of that online of the shock testing rig hammering the scope as if it's recoiling on a rifle. And there's a number of other videos on YouTube from OneLeaf.ai covering various aspects of the operation. So if you're interested, they're definitely worth a look. There is a link in the description below, which will give you a discount if you want to take a flyer on this before I've finished the full review. And if you click that link and purchase a scope, I get nothing because that would be wrong. Now I will say, despite not participating in their affiliate program, this was sent to me free of charge for purposes of evaluation. So that's just in the interest of full disclosure. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to get a good review because of that. If it gets a good review, it will be because I'm impressed and think it's worth the money. So far, I feel that way. So, shout out to my Patreon supporters. Everything costs money, except the occasional night vision scope, and your contributions help more than you know. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors, those businesses and individuals who have been helpful in innumerable ways, including allowing me to show, shoot and show you their firearms, the use of their facilities, um, donations of ammunition, and even the occasional donation of a firearm. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyway, more to come on the Night Vision Scope. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you again real soon.